Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn, and probably one of the most frequent questions I get from people is, what are my computer specs? I figured I'd shoot this quick video to share with you all what my computer specs are, especially since the rollout of mods for the PS4 have been disappointing to many players. I know Christmas is right around the corner, and many of you are getting ready to build your PCs so that you can play Fallout 4 and games like it. For the TDLR crowd out there, you can skip this entire video by just going down to the description. I have every computer part in my computer listed as well as a link to where you can find the items on Amazon. I don't claim in any way to have built the best computer. That's not the goal of this video. It's also not the most affordable computer. I will go over some really affordable options to build a computer that can defeat any console. But the goal of this video is to answer one specific question. Oxhorn, what are your computer specs? Here they are. After my World of Warcraft days, I took a long break from gaming. During that time, I didn't need a gaming PC. I bought a Dell XPS X8 700 to do some basic video editing from time to time and to act as my work PC. When I bought it, it was already a few years old, but it was far better than anything I had ever used before. It's really amazing how quickly technology advances. But then I got interested in Fallout 4 and I installed it on this computer and tried to play it and it was a nightmare. I could play the game, but it was no fun. The very first Fallout 4 video I published was made on this computer. This is what it looks like. Does this even need a commentary? You can see how horrible it is. When I started getting serious about my Fallout 4 videos, I realized that I needed to upgrade my system. Now, before I begin, I have to tell you, the best place to go to find a detailed list of parts to buy to build your PC is the PC Master Race subreddit of Reddit. I link to it in the description of this video. They have an entire build section where they walk you through a variety of different PC builds to fit your budget and your needs. The cool thing is that these builds are constantly updated. When I visited this list months ago, the parts were very different from when I visited it just recently. Honestly, building a PC is almost as easy as putting together Legos. If you're feeling adventurous at all, then I highly encourage you to build your own PC using one of these guides on the PC Master Race subreddit. My PC is based on one of these builds. I did make some changes to the parts that they recommended because I have very specific needs as a YouTuber and a Twitch streamer, but I'll get to those in a minute. If you want to build a PC that is around the same price as a console, then the build you want here is called the Media Elite. As of today, the cost to build this yourself is $366.81. That's about $100 more than the Xbox One at Walmart.com right now, and only about $50 more than a PlayStation 4. This build has a GPU that is on par with all consoles on the market today, and a CPU that actually outperforms them. The fundamental problem with consoles is you're basically hiring somebody to build a gaming computer for you. Naturally, they're going to build it using the cheapest parts they can get away with. The benefit to building your own computer is you get to pick which parts go in and you can tailor it to your specific needs. They have builds here that fit a variety of different financial needs. They've got a $450 build, a $600 build, and a $933 build. The build that I used as a foundation for my computer is the end all, the $933 build. I chose this build because I wanted to present the beauty of Fallout 4 in the best way possible for my videos. You very well might not need a computer this intense. If all you're wanting to do is match what you already get on consoles, then go with the cheaper Media Elite version. You can build that computer for 350 bucks. But if you really want to get the most out of Fallout 4, for less than $1,000, you can choose the end all. I spent more money on my box from Dell back when I didn't even need to do video games, and I am kicking myself over that horrible decision. Because my logic applies to them too. If you buy a pre-built computer from Dell, you're basically paying somebody to build a computer for you, and they're going to choose the cheapest parts they can get away with. But that was the computer I had, and I used it as a foundation for my gaming computer. I took pieces out and put pieces in slowly over time until finally I had a computer that was completely built by me with every single part picked by me. But that experiment came at a cost, and I'll get to that soon. The first thing I did is I upgraded my hard drive to a solid state hard drive. 
The reason I chose this first is because a solid state hard drive has no moving parts and therefore information can be written and read from it much more quickly. An HDD has a spinning disk on the inside, which means your computer is going to be reading information from it much slower. The greatest benefit you're gonna find in Fallout 4 when you install a solid state hard drive is when it comes to zoning. One of the most shocking things to me when I first started playing Fallout 4 was how long I had to wait when zoning between buildings and the outside world, particularly in downtown Boston. On my old Dell, it would sometimes take two plus minutes just to zone from the Mass Fusion building to downtown Boston. Ridiculous. Switching to a solid state hard drive completely removed that issue. This is a real-time recording of me zoning from the inside of Mass Fusion to the outside of downtown Boston. Now this is manageable. After some time, I purchased a second solid state hard drive. I transferred my operating system to one and my Fallout 4 installation to the other. This was tricky to do. The operating system transfer software that came with my Samsung solid state hard drive didn't work. Every time I tried to copy my operating system over, it failed. I found a guide online that showed me step by step and I failed a dozen times, it took me hours, but eventually I managed to transfer my entire operating system to one hard drive and then install Fallout 4 on another. The reason I did this is because I wanted my operating system to be able to run in the background, writing files, reading files, doing things, while my Fallout 4 installation operated in a completely different environment. I figured that that would give me better performance. Now I do have better performance, but I don't know if that's the reason. Maybe this was unnecessary and I'm just being superstitious or something. But another reason I got two solid state hard drives is because I do a lot of video editing and I wanted to keep all of my file storage and rendering on one hard drive so that my Fallout 4 installation had a dedicated place to run. Next, I went with a better graphics card. I realized that the biggest change that I was gonna get to my Fallout 4 experience is if I upgraded my graphics card. Your GPU, more than anything else, is going to be what's responsible for the beauty of your game. So based on the PC Master Race parts list and the reviews I read online, I chose the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 970 4GB Twin Turbo graphics card. It ended up being a huge disappointment. Remember how I said that I was basically slowly building a new computer based on my old Dell? There ended up being some complications with that. After installing this graphics card, my computer would not boot. Black screen. Computer was on, monitor was on, but black screen, nothing worked. Couldn't enter BIOS, couldn't do anything. I figured, well, I must have a faulty card. So I ordered a new one from Amazon. It arrived on my doorstep. I installed it and it too gave me a black screen. Nothing. I was so disappointed. To this day, I don't know what the issue was. It had to have been some sort of conflict with the motherboard that came with my Dell. So instead I got the R9 390. I've been pretty pleased with this card. I could have gotten better. Looking back on this decision, I probably would have gotten a better card now that I'm doing this full time. But this card has treated me nicely. I managed to install it in my Dell with no problems. I booted up Fallout 4 and it was a world of difference. The game looked so much more beautiful. For the first time ever, I could turn every single setting on ultra and I didn't have any bad game performance. My FPS went from the 20s to the over 100s. I had to use an FPS limiter to keep it under 80 frames per second because the way the Fallout 4 engine works is if your frame rates get too high, the internal clock of the game starts to speed up. You'll notice this when you go to pick locks. You barely move the mouse and the entire lock spins around in a circle. You also run faster when your FPS is too high. So if you get a better graphics card, you need to limit your FPS. Many people will say that you should limit it to 60 frames per second, but I limit mine to 80, and that seems to work fine for me. Now I know that there are a lot of Nvidia fanboys out there who are going to extol the virtues of their preferred manufacturer, and I have no qualms with Nvidia. Their card just for some reason didn't seem to work for me, and the AMD has been working well. I'm told that Nvidia does produce better graphics cards. 
I read up a bit on this, and it looks like the more expensive Radeon cards are getting up there to the quality of NVIDIA. I suppose I could say that if you can afford an NVIDIA card and it works with your machine, then you should probably go with an NVIDIA. But I've had no problems with my Radeon. The only thing I get is sometimes I'll get this rainbow texture in my game, which you've probably seen in some of my videos. I can't explain it. I don't know if it's because of the Radeon card or not. I currently don't know how to fix it. Now that I have all these new hard drives and this new video card, I needed to upgrade my power source. If you don't upgrade your power supply, you could damage your computer. So I purchased the EVGA 650GQ, the 80 plus gold 650W power supply. I have nothing sexy or interesting to say about this thing. I installed it, it worked, I love it. I stuck with this build for months. 90% of the videos you've seen on my YouTube channel were made using this setup. But recently, I fully upgraded my computer and removed every single Dell part from it. I now have a completely custom-built computer with parts that I hand-picked. Let me go through the rest with you. I purchased the Corsair Carbide Series 200R PC case recommended by the PC Master Race Guide. 60 bucks. It has a windowed version, which basically has a piece of plastic, transparent plastic on the side of it, so that you can see the sexy computer parts on the inside. But I didn't need to do that. My computer is hidden in the corner of my office. I never look at it, so. I chose the cheaper version. Into that case, I installed my motherboard. I purchased the Z170A Asus DDR4 motherboard. Now the PC Master Race Guide actually recommends the cheaper Z170E. It was about $50 more expensive than the Z170E, but I chose this one so I would have a more advanced motherboard when slash if I ever decide to upgrade my computer anymore. Into the motherboard, I installed my Intel Core i7-6700K quad-core processor. This also was not the recommended processor by the PC Master Race Guide. The PC Master Race Guide recommends the i5-6600 3.5 gigahertz quad-core, the guide says that the i7 is not worth the price, that an i5 is just as good for gaming as an i7 and it's going to suit most people's needs. The i5 is $100 cheaper than the i7, so you get significant savings by going with the guide. I chose to go with the i7 because I do a lot of internet streaming. When I do my weekly live show, I've got two different cameras streaming live to the internet while I'm playing video games and oftentimes while I have multiple browser tabs open. I also process a ton of video. Sometimes I'll have 40 browser tabs open while I've got Adobe Premiere open and Adobe Photoshop open and sometimes After Effects open, all while I've got Fallout 4 running in the background so that I can capture some footage. 99% of people who are using this PC for gaming will not need the i7, but I felt that I needed it, so I went ahead and splurged and got the i7. Next, after you get your processor installed, you need to get a fan. The cooling component is extremely important. My old computer was running on the fans that came with the Dell, and sometimes my CPU and graphics card would get up into the 70 degrees Celsius range, which is pretty hot. I, I, I didn't want it to be that hot. Now you have a couple of options when cooling your system. You can go with a water cooling system or a fan system. Water cooling is typically going to be quieter, but it's much more complicated to install and maintain. There are kits out there that you can get that reduce a lot of the frustration of installing water coolers, but I've read that you gotta keep them filled up with water and it just becomes a hassle. I didn't want the hassle. So I simply bought the fan that was recommended in the PC Master Race Guide. I got the CryoRig H7 Tower Cooler for AMD slash Intel CPUs. It's a beautiful little fan. I, lo I love the way it looks, and it was fairly simple to install. It is, however, the trickiest thing you have to install. To attach it to your CPU, you have to install some cryo paste onto the top of your CPU. If you're really OCD about this, you can get some cryo paste application kits. There are also better versions of the cryo paste that comes with the fan. And if you want to, you can do some research to find the cryo paste that fits your needs. There are some low viscosity cryo pastes that are easier to apply, but in return you get less transfer of heat. And then high viscosity cryo pastes, which are much harder to apply, but give the greatest transfer of heat from the CPU to the fan. The one that comes with the fan is in between those two. Somewhat tricky to apply, but not as hard as some of the better cryopastes out there. 
It was nerve-wracking installing my fan onto my CPU, but I ended up not needing to worry. The installation went smoothly, and everything worked out in the end. Last but not least comes RAM. Now, many gamers, including the PC Master Race guys, are going to say that you don't need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, there are very few games out there that are going to require more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. I respect that, but based on my tests, I need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. It might just be due to what I do with my computer. But the reason I knew that I needed more than 16 gigs of RAM is because I happen to have an 8 gigabyte stick lying around, and I installed it in my computer to get 24 gigabytes of RAM before I completed my latest installation. I noticed a significant improvements in my Fallout 4 gaming experience. I got fewer hitches, things seemed a little bit smoother, and so for my final build, I went ahead and got 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now bear in mind that if you get the motherboard that I got, it only accepts DDR4 RAM, not the more common DDR3. I actually made that mistake. I bought 32 gigabytes worth of DDR3 RAM only to discover that it was the wrong RAM for the motherboard. So I had to return the RAM. Amazon is amazing, guys. They, they take your returns. Not to sound like a shill for Amazon or anything. Trust me, I don't have any Amazon stock. But they took both of my NVIDIA graphics card returns and all of my DDR3 RAM without asking any questions and gave me a full refund. I am a customer for life. Now there's a lot of documentation out there that says that when you get your RAM, you need to make sure that every RAM piece is from the same manufacturer and even check the documentation on the chips themselves to make sure that each chip comes from the same assembly line and that they were assembled during the same dates. That may or may not be good advice, I don't know. I bought four chips from the same manufacturer. They looked really nice, they're these red looking chips, but I didn't bother to check to make sure that they came from the same assembly line or that they were manufactured around the same date. Now, that's all you need, except, of course, a monitor. That's gonna cost you extra. But you have to buy a TV for your console anyway, so the cost of a monitor shouldn't go into the overall computer cost. If you build this computer that I just built for myself, make sure you get a 144 megahertz monitor, which is going to make your game look so much better. Additionally, you're going to need an operating system. I didn't have to buy one with this installation because I still had my operating system from my old Dell. But if you're building this thing from scratch, then you're gonna need to buy an operating system. You can get Windows 10 for as low as $85. And of course you could choose Linux and Unix and all of these different things. I'm not gonna get into it. I really only know Windows, that's what I use. So this new computer of mine is running the game really well. I haven't noticed a huge improvement now that I have a new motherboard, a new CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. The biggest changes to my gameplay experience came with the solid state hard drives and the graphics card. If you're wanting to get the biggest bang for your buck at the lowest amount of money possible and you already have a computer, then invest in a solid state hard drive and get a top of the line graphics card. If your motherboard can handle them, that's gonna give you the best performance. So was it worth it? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge. I had the foresight to record some footage before I installed the new CPU, the new motherboard, and the additional RAM, so that I had something to compare it to later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two scenes in front of you, side by side, one on my old computer, one on the new one, and I'll let you be the judge. I'm not gonna put the FPS in the corner because I feel that that sometimes can bias the way one feels. I want to see if you notice a difference between the two. So here we are in Hangman Alley, on the left hand side is before I installed the new motherboard CPU and additional RAM, and on the right is after. <laughs> I used to be scared of super mutants, but we taught him a lesson this time. Now it's still a little choppy. <laughs> Some of you might be looking at that going, well, what the heck, this is still choppy. Well, let me explain. This is in one of my really crowded settlements with 36 settlers, each of which has a unique costume, which required its own textures, each of which has a mod installed to improve the skin performance, not to mention all of the different decorations in the settlement. It's a very intensive settlement. So even with this extreme top of the line build, I still get fairly low FPS in Hangman's Alley. It never goes below 20. To put that in perspective, when I played Fallout 4 on my thousand dollar Dell computer that I bought over a year ago, before ever installing any mods, the entire game, my first playthrough was at around 20 to 23 frames per second the entire game. Maybe that's why a low FPS in settlements doesn't bother me because I'm so used to playing at low FPS anyway. 
So let's run this experiment where there are no settlements. Let's go to the heart of downtown Boston and just run. On the left, we have my old computer. On the right, my new. Did you notice a difference? Was one more choppy than the other? Did I waste my money? Let me know in the comments below. Now, since I am constantly recording on this computer, I've learned a few things that I wanna share with you. Number one, using Fraps really bogs down your computer. Fraps is the software that I use to produce my videos and to do screen capture, and it captures some of the highest quality images of any screen capture tool out there. I know that there are many GPUs that come with their own screen capture software, but I have been using Fraps for years. Even back in my old World of Warcraft days, I used it to make my machinima. I know how to use it and the quality is amazing, but it's super computer intensive. I've noticed when recording that if I have a browser open, any other software open, even a Windows Explorer folder open, that it can impact my game performance. So if you want the best performance in your game, use Control-Alt-Delete to shut down every program running on your machine that is not absolutely necessary, including all of your browsers, any crapware that came with the PC that you bought, any streaming music, streaming video like Netflix. Just make sure it's all turned off. You're gonna get a much better game performance. Even if you plonk down all this money for a computer like this, if you're constantly streaming Netflix and you've got 30 tabs open and you've got video editing software in the background, you're still gonna have a performance hit. This computer isn't a magic pill, but it is a significant improvement. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All in all, this computer cost me about $1,000 if you don't take into consideration the Windows software that came with my old Dell. And I see it as a great investment into my Fallout 4 videos and this channel. What do you guys think? What would you do differently? Do you agree with the guys over at PC Master Race? Do you think that their builds are useful? Let me know in the comments below. I genuinely want to know your opinions. I read all the comments on my videos and I respond to the very best ones. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I make a new video every day, sometimes about Fallout 4, sometimes about Skyrim, sometimes about Overwatch. Who knows what I make videos about? I'm considering playing more games. <laughs> so subscribe to find out what I do next. And if you like what I do and you want to support me on a more personal level, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon supporters get access to a bunch of cool Oxhorn perks, including my private Discord server, where you can chat with me any time of the day and find groups to play your favorite games. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.